Hello, and welcome back to the Artist Forge Live. My name is Nicole York. I'm going to be your host. I'm a minor disaster. Welcome to the party. Today, we have with us your other incredible Artist Forge founding members, hosts, moderators, and all-around badasses, Matt Stagliano and Becca Bjorki and Kat Ford Coates and Basam Saba. Welcome, guys, to the first hey. stream of the month. Hello, we everyone. Here. Olga I is here there. already. Olga! Friends, Eager friends. Olga. If y'all are here, say hi. Let us know you're here today. So how I'm is, just going how is to I'm just going to pour myself a little bit more of this apothic red, right? It's just vanilla. in case they wanted to sponsor anything, <laughs> we're putting it to good use. Just saying. Indeed. We're consumers apothic of the product. Are. are you are you paying good. attention to product? I'm good. Eager. <laughs> Is everybody boozy today? I feel like everybody's boozy today. Uh, today's so a boozy boozy. day. Very boozy. It's yeah. here. Tea. 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 Just a reminder to our friends in the audience, <laughs> if you are in Facebook land and you have not given StreamYard permission, but you would like us to be able to see your name when we share your comments like these, you have to give StreamYard permission for that. So um, sometimes we are monitoring and we can tell who is there. But it's always handy to be able to see your name and say hi to you because we love you guys. How is everybody in the audience today? If you guys are hanging out, let us know in the comments how you're doing today. So we were having, so it looks like we had, uh, oh, so that was Stacy and Michael, Stacy McNaughton and Michael Gonzalez. So hey, y'all. Hey okay, so. We've had some interesting conversations this week. I know Kat has been traveling, so she hasn't been able to be there for everything. But has anything stuck in your mind this week? Um, anything particular? We've had some. We've had some relatively esoteric conversations. I feel like so far. Yeah, I thought the one on <laughs> neurodivergent thinking really got me thinking. Um, but I think the entire week, today's conversation about saying no and just. Basically, and we really we never really got to any solutions or tools or tips. It was really just commiserating. And quite honestly, it felt pretty good to understand myself a little bit better about when I say no and when I don't and the reasons why. And I think, you know, the big thing for me was peeling back the layers a little bit and actually thinking like, wow, I, I guess I don't say no a lot. I guess I don't set the right boundaries. And then I wonder why I'm in sometimes the mess that I'm in. Um, so being able to understand all of that and just hear from other people that, oh yeah, that happens on their side too. I was, I was pretty stoked. So it was a really good conversation. I can't wait to see if, uh, if that continues tomorrow. Yeah, I was really bummed, but I was like, neurodivergence, come on! Ah, I was so bummed, so bummed. But hopefully, uh, we can we can circle back, uh, just for you know, to appease my own <laughs> my own wanting to to be included in that conversation. But uh, otherwise, like, yeah, we've had some killer conversations this week. Uh, yeah, one. I think yeah. we have to circle back around to that one. I think it would be really great if we could uh, snag a professional and bring them on and just chat them up and ask them questions and see what their experiences and thoughts are on there. Because um, even just according to that, I, and I did link that um, paper in the group, according to that paper, they were looking at, you know, self-reported. And it looked like, and this is a, a British paper, that it was essentially saying that 20% of people in the creative field reported neurodivergence, and that is 50% more representation than in other fields. And I was like, well, that's um, that makes not sense. surprising at all. That tracks. <laughs> that tracks. Yeah, so uh, I was also away, I think, three days this week, uh, but I did listen to the replays um, every day. Um, and really enjoyed the conversations. But before I, I talk about that, I just want to, for the record, I just want to say I do bring back my cart every single time. <laughs> okay. Because my yeah. vote has to be in there. Yes. 
Matt. Hanging me out there to dry, man. Hanging me out yeah, there. Uh, you're you know, fired. You're out. Right. You're gone. Deuces, I, son. You know so what? Much- I am a real person. You <laughs> angels that sit on high. I know for a fact there's been a cart or two where you're just looking around. You're like, there's no one here. Fuck it. And you no, take off. Matt. Now, no, no, you are on no. your own there, bro. No. <laughs> I'm a party of one. Doesn't matter. So party of that, one. I want to know who who is in the audience today. Have you ever just left your cart? Have you done it? You got you can't leave Matt hanging all by himself. <laughs> Mom, he oh, yes, a, you can. He is a friend. Yes, you can. <laughs> out to so, dry so while Holier we're doing now that, all of you while we're doing that as much as i enjoyed uh, today yesterday today today's conversation about saying no was it today yeah i can't remember because i joined today yes um the conversation we had about luck uh was kind of timely and i i really enjoyed it and i say timely because on my i was driving about six hours to get to where i was going this week and on the way, I was listening for the first time ever to that podcast. Uh, I'm sure all of you know it. Um, the uh, how how I built it. Yeah. Have you guys ever heard about the podcast How I Built It? Yeah, it's no. great. No. Have you? Yeah. Well, basically, it's a podcast where a, a guy, Guy Raz, interviews uh, very famous, successful business people, and and they talk about how they made it, how they built their company. I just listened to Squarespace and and and. Uh, uh, Canva and all the, you know, they're all multi-billionaires. That it, anyways, the, the whole point of it is that at the end of each interview, he asked the question, same question. How much of your success do you attribute to your skills, your hard work and your effort versus luck, right? So that was on, on Sunday. And then on Monday or Tuesday, you guys talked about luck. So I thought it was time. It was very interesting. And what they all, they all tend to have as very similar answer to that question and they say well i consider myself lucky on things in a way that i didn't have control over so i'm lucky i was born in the united states i'm lucky i was born into a family that was you know that stayed together i'm lucky that like when we never had to worry about money and i had the opportunity i'm lucky my parents had a computer in the house this is back in the 80s or, or early you know late early or late 80s so they always talked about things that they they don't control that they were lucky about but then they say everything else i don't consider luck it's hard work it's 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 repetition it's over and over and over and over so i thought that was interesting that it was a consistent answer among all of them yeah i would be curious to know um so for friends in the audience if you didn't get to join us for that conversation we talked about luck and how that plays into our success um, as artists, as business people, where we actually see first what we consider luck to mean, but second, just trying to find out, even looking back in our past, are there things there that we would consider luck that helped us get to where we're at? And um, everybody had a little bit of a different answer. And I think what we kind of landed on was there's no real way to know what percentage of your success luck might be. We know it plays a role but we also know that your chances of having luck work in your favor are vastly improved when you are super prepared and when you continue to show up over and over again consistently. And depending on what your attitude is, right? If you have a great attitude about stuff, um, then you're more likely to see opportunities instead of roadblocks that contribute to success. And it felt like that was where the, that we kind of yeah. landed. Do you guys feel yeah. like that well, was where it ended up? Actually, I, I kind of summarized it because I, I summarized it into four different, uh, I guess, definitions of luck that we ended up talking about. And, and I, that's my own analysis, by the way. It's not, you know, but the interesting thing is that I only see two of the four as real luck, whereas the rest are something else. Right. So the first one is, you know, that what we call divine intervention. Right. That's pure luck. I mean, a, a good example, you're golfing with a friend and lightning hits and your friend gets hit, but you don't. It, you know, you're pretty damn lucky. All right. And that's so that's divine intervention. Right. The second kind of luck was related to randomness, right? Like probabilities and possibilities. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, it's the example that Kat gave, you know, where, where she had to pick, a, you know, it was a lottery to, to, get, to get tickets to something and you were lucky and you picked first, you, you, you know, you could have gotten the last one like your friend did, right? So that's like uh, throwing a pair of dice and saying, you know, I want to get double sixes on the first try. There's 36 chances and 
you know, you get it on the first try, that's luck, but that's randomness. And that's kind of a, I would define that as being lucky. The third one is kind of in between and that's related to trial and error, right? So that's that's what we do as artists or whatever, where we keep trying and trying and trying and repeating and, 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 and building and, and, and creating. And eventually we get pretty consistent at it and people say, hey, uh, you're pretty lucky to be able to do it. As Whereas we know that it really has nothing to do with luck. Maybe if our first piece or our first photo was sold for a million bucks, maybe that's luck, right? But in essence, it's really about repetition. So I'm not sure there's luck there. And the last one um, was uh, what I call, I don't call luck, I would call it circumstance, which is the Becca's example of being at the bar at the right time, the right place, having the right conversation, conversation, being in the right mood and, and having the right like presence to be able to talk to this guy and, and offer you a job. And this is where I really don't see any luck there. I, I think it's pure circumstance and, and, and you, because you put yourself out there, you, you've built relationships, you've networked, you've, you know, this is the example of, of putting yourself out there, out there. And then we end up saying, well, had I not had that luck, had I not been that lucky, I wouldn't be with my husband or my wife or where I am today. But in reality, um, maybe you wouldn't be right, but maybe the next circumstance, the next set of circumstance, would have happened and you'd be with somebody and you'd be somewhere and you'd be saying the same thing about that, you know, event that happened in your life. So to me, that's not luck, that's circumstance. And that could be, uh, you know, uh, you know, you, you have better chances of, of getting lucky because you're putting yourself out there and you're networking and so on. Anyways, well, that's kind of the summary of, of what I saw on that day. When we're talking about luck and circumstance, right? I think it's also important to note the the privilege aspect as well, um, and noting like the privilege you have to be even in the room in the first place to experience right. the circumstances that allow you to take advantage of certain things, um, and that is something that I, I was thinking about pretty hardcore actually throughout the week following that call was okay how much of that is privilege and how much of that is luck and how much of that is simply just being allowed to be in the room in the first place. Um, and I mean, that's obviously a topic for a whole other day, but I, I definitely wanted to note it on the call, especially since we're, you know, addressing luck as a topic and, and things like that. But um, understanding that luck has like this, like, teensy tiny little bit to do with things and then but i think privilege has a lot to do with it um even you know as a broke girl in boston uh working my dick off uh at the end of the day is that where it went that's definitely where mine was uh, <laughs> uh you know an understanding that like even all of the, the work that it took me to get to that space to be able to take advantage of those circumstances was still coming from a place of like, I had the privilege to be in that space to work in such a way to make that happen. So yeah, I, I just wanted to, to make sure that, that that was noted and understood um, moving forward. For yeah, sure. and I like I like that. And I think the word privilege. I mean, could be. I mean, I'm lucky enough to to have met somebody yeah. who brought me who brought me there, right? Uh, so in a way, yeah. Like, I mean, it's 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 never black and white, right? It's a gray. It's gray, really. What luck is and what it isn't. For sure, and I think I'm I'm really glad that you brought that up, Kat, because it's interesting. Sometimes I think we make the mistake of thinking that when somebody says you had the privilege of that circumstance what they're saying is you didn't have to work or you didn't have any struggles or anything like that, which is bull crap, right? Really what that, all that right. means is that you got lucky in a certain area and that doesn't, that, that doesn't say that you didn't struggle or you didn't have to work hard or there weren't difficulties for you to overcome or anything like that. It just means in this specific spot, like I was born into a family where my parents stayed together. I had no control over that. That was pretty like lucky set of circumstances and there are certain privileges that kids who have parents who stay together tend to have we have a sense of long-term security and some other things that are beneficial to us that we didn't we didn't work hard for those circumstances they just happen to be that way 
if you grew up in a in a family where the right. home was full of books, you also had that privilege. That's the set of you know circumstances you didn't do anything about, and you're going to benefit from that your whole life. That doesn't mean we didn't still work really damn hard to get where we're at, and that we didn't overcome those struggles. But I think it is important, just for the sake of equity, to recognize that there are times where we're going to benefit from things that we had no control over. Word. Sorry, I just heard a a beepy button and I'm not sure what's happening. There's some clicking happening, Nicole. Uh, Yeah, I hear it. Do you hear it when I'm muted? What's happening is your microphone is scraping against the zipper on your hoodie. You have a choice of unzipping or zipping further. <laughs> like, is this zip? Is this what it is? That's exactly yeah. what it is. Okay. There we go. Who's the audio guy? Go. I'm the audio <laughs> guy. No <one> <laughs> fixed. I fixed it. All right, so we, have, we haven't got an answer yet, and I'm really wondering from our friends in the audience today, how do you think luck has played a part in your career as an artist? Do you think it has? Do you think it hasn't? And, and for me, I think um, when I think of luck, I often I'm think, of, I think of sometimes that circumstantial stuff that you mentioned, Bassan, like maybe I, maybe I submitted to a contest 10 times. And I failed nine times. And the 10th time somebody happened to be on the panel who happened to see my work the way that I hoped somebody would, right? And that may be circumstantial, but it may sure turn out lucky for me if it happens to go in my favor, right? And there's no, those are the things we don't have any control over. So in my mind, I think that's where that luck comes from because nothing I do could have contributed to that outcome aside from what I can control, which is continue to make the good work and submit the good work. And I think that's where I landed on it too, is that there is, I have a really hard time with luck. And I know I said some things in the call where, you know, I feel pretty lucky that certain things happen to me, but again, that's all kind of circumstantial. I just have a really hard time with the notion of luck itself um, without going into all sorts of weird woo woo stuff. Um, I think it's just for me, any opportunity that's been presented has been hard work, hard work, put yourself in the places like Kat said, put yourself in the room. What gets you into that room can be a myriad of things. I just don't think it's luck, right? Um, so, you know, you submitting all of these things on the 10th time you finally get there. It's not luck that someone was there. You're It's playing the odds. It's consequences, right? It's bound to happen that there will eventually be a judge, whether it's the 10th time or the 100th time. But there's a set of odds there and you're playing them over and over and over. And you're going to win eventually. And I just think that's part of this is that it's not necessarily luck. It's just continuing to put that effort in over and over and over. And it does pay off sometimes sooner, sometimes later, but it eventually does. Right. But it's it's a bit more than odds, uh, Matt. I totally agree with you. I mean, it is odds because, you know, the more you do it, the more chances are. But it's a bit more than that because you actually have control over it. You can actually get better at networking. You can actually sure. get better at which event do I go to, right? You may still not meet that person but you're maximizing your chances, right? Which is the difference between that and, and, and basically just randomly throwing a die, you know, rolling a dice because you yep. really don't have control over that, right? So that's, that's where I see the difference of where it's not pure, it's not, it, it's, yeah, anyways. Yes to chaos, to- Olga. Yes. <laughs> I think what makes it, I think what makes it so hard is that so much of it is going to depend on what your definition of luck is, you know, and, and for me, it just boils down to the things I didn't have control over. And if, when those things happen to align in my favor, I consider that, well, that's not fair. I might consider it, um, I might not consider it luck. I might consider it providence. But either way, it's a, it's a thing I could not have done for myself. I don't have control over who's on a panel. I don't have control over who shows up to the networking events and what kind of day they had. Maybe the right person shows up and they had a shitty day and they just don't want to talk to me. Um, you know, all of that stuff, all of the circumstantial stuff, I don't have any control over that. And so in, in my mind, the things I don't have control over fall into the realm of luck. And 
since we never know how big of a role that's going to play in the outcome, then I think all we have to do is really just focus on what we, what we do. I mean, that's, that's really all that's left for us, right. Is to go, well, how can I, how do I contribute to the situation? Yeah. And actually the Oxford, I'm just reading the Oxford simple definition of luck is success or failure apparently brought by chance rather than through one's own actions. Right. 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 And so, I mean, we're always contributing to the outcome, but how much? I mean, that's, you know, that's the question. Are we contributing more or less? Or if the right person happens to be there at the right time, were we contributing more that time or the same amount? And it just happened to be the, the other side of the equation that got filled there. Um, and the, I think the reason I wanted to talk about this was because I did want to demystify a little bit the fact that sometimes it can feel like the people we admired, um, they're just better than us for some reason, you know? more talented, more skilled, better at talking to people, just better. And so in a way we can kind of be like, well, I mean, of course they're better than me. And, and it feels like adding a crutch where I can go, well, I, I guess I didn't have to try as hard cause like I'm never gonna get there. But if we acknowledge that luck plays some role then it's like, well, hell, what makes them any more luckier than me? If there's a, some aspect of chance that comes into play here then I'm as likely to end up with that good chance as anybody else. So I'm just, I'll, I'll roll the dice too. I mean, and, and so I guess for me, it just, it feels a little more hopeful than saying in order to make it, I just have to outwork everybody else. Cause that's not going to happen. I'll work really hard, but there's, I got limits too, man. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's an interesting thing because I know certainly I've seen seen certain folks and been like, man, they're really lucky or I'm never going to be that good, right? And it's this whole comparison thing. And we know that's not a good thing to have. But certainly, I mean, it's it's happened in the past. But yeah, there's nothing um, to quote you, Nicole, uh, more luckier on their side than <laughs> than anything that, that I have. So um, it's just an interesting way to look at it, right? Just when you understand the game a little bit more, you realize that there, there's not a whole lot of luck involved. There's a lot of opportunity. There's a lot of circumstance. Um, there's a lot of playing the game, playing the odds. But um, Well, and there's a yeah. lot of opportunity that you're able to take advantage of. Exactly. You have to right? be able to see the opportunity and be prepared for that, right? Right. Like you were saying. Well, and you, you have know, to be allowed to seat at the table, too. Well, and Matt was saying on the call, you know, like where preparation meets opportunity, like that's very true. If I'm not in a position to have a folio that's good enough or skills that are prepared enough, when Vogue rolls in and needs a photographer for X, Y, Z, I'm not in a position to take advantage of that, even if it's presented to me. When I was, I think it was 2000. 15? Yeah, Blue Cuts, it was still open. So it was 2015. And a company reached out to me about renting a studio space for a commercial gig. And my studio at the time, like the name of my business at the time was Studio 828. And 828 was the area code that I live in. So SEO wise, Photo Studio in Asheville was like number one on all things. And they reached out to me and were like, hey, you know, like we need a photo studio, commercial gig, rah, 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 rah. And I was not in a position to be like, hell yeah, come into my eight by 16 space with your giant team and 47 photographers. Like that wasn't a thing. But what I did was, okay, this is an opportunity. So what I, I went through and I was like, okay, who has spaces in my area who has spaces in Asheville that will rent out their studio for this kind of a thing and sent them options. Well, then that turned into, would you like to work as a second PA on the shoot? Now, forget it. Like my work was garbage. I didn't know what I was doing and I was hoping for the best and rah, rah, rah. But because I had taken action on their needs, I was given an opportunity to work on this commercial gig 
to with a world-class photographer and a huge team and understanding a side of the business that I didn't know anything about. That was terrific. And I still had an eight by 16 space, right? My work wasn't good enough, but because I took action on being able to help them source a solution for their problem, I was able to take advantage of that and better my own skill set. But had I not been prepared to even be resourceful for their needs, that never would have happened ever in a million years. And it was purely on luck that I happened to name my studio X, Y, and Z. So yes, being prepared is, is a requirement for being able to take advantage of opportunity, but also being resourceful in a moment to be able to take advantage of that opportunity is a thing. Yeah, and not just resourceful, of service, because you could be resourceful and say, hey, I want nothing to do with them, but you wanted to serve them. Right, you're generous, basically. So your generosity led to, right? Well, and that's interesting yes, you're too all because <laughs> <laughs> you're all welcome. That's interesting too because, like as you mentioned, you, the choice of the studio name. They also could have looked beyond your studio, right? Like they could have scrolled, you know, five things down and clicked on that person, or the people that were working that day could have been like, "Well, that's nice of her. Let's go on with our business." Instead of saying well, let's, you know, bring her on for this. Like, so, so if everything wasn't working in concert, the result wouldn't have been the same. And here, you know, like Kat is doing her part and that's all we can do. We can't guarantee that the other people are going to re be receptive. We can't guarantee that they're going to pick us or respond the well or whatever it is. But like, since we don't have control over that part of it, maybe it's not worth worrying about except to go, I could be lucky too. Somebody, somebody else. I, I will put in the hard work, and you never know. Sharon, well, said, the name uh, of the game was, is always be in service. Be always. prepared. Have the right attitude. Be resourceful. For sure. All right. As we start to get close to the half hour, where we will begin looking at some of the beautiful images that were submitted for last month's challenge. There were so many gorgeous images. We couldn't let it go. We wanted to make sure that we came back and addressed some of that beauty that we didn't get to talk about at the last live stream of March. So we're going to look at them this April and enjoy them all together. Um, but in the meantime, if you are here with us today and you haven't said hi in the comments, what's wrong with you? We want to know that you're here. We want to hang out with you. Say something. Um, and if you have any thoughts on how luck or if luck has impacted your career or is it all just hard work, share your thoughts. We want to hear what you have to say. So we have several gorgeous images today, all very super different. And I, I cannot wait to grab some of them. Let me make sure that I've got everything opened up down here. In the meantime, um, has anybody been working on the April challenge? I know Bassam has shared some work on the theme. Um, has anybody else been working on it? Have you guys been thinking about it? Friends in the audience, have you been doing anything with the theme of love for April? I've got a self-portrait in mind that uh, I've been piecing together. Ooh. It's just a matter of getting into the studio and doing it. And uh, I will just say it's <laughs> it's inspired by Becca, and I'm going to leave it at that, at which point her oh eyes did exactly what I thought they would do. Yep. So um, I'll, I'll let you in on it in a little bit, Becca, uh, so that you're not concerned. Um, does, but... <laughs> does John need to be worried, or are you a threat? Not in the least. <laughs> not in the least. Nope. Nope. It's, it would be exhausting to get to where you are anyway. It's just uh, <laughs> you know, the energy. Matt's uh, just too old. But, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I've been thinking about it. So in the works. And self-portrait challenge. I'm calling you out. Mm -hmm. Nope. So the reason I haven't been in the studio a whole lot is because it's been cold, you know, in Maine. Happens because that it's way. Maine. Uh, yeah. Because it's Maine. It almost snowed today. Um, 
<laughs> so uh, to keep the heating costs down, <laughs> to keep the heating costs down, I moved back here to the home studio. And um, now that the weather started to kick back up, I'm back in. So that means creation can start again. And um, I'm all excited about it. So rebirth happening, all sorts of new stuff coming. That's, let's go with okay. that. Let's go with that, Barry. Olga says she's trying to think of a concept, but it's tough. Um, and of course, Sharon saying she can't wait to see what Matt is going to create. Me too. Tough I'm, love. I'm tough intrigued. love would be a good subject. Tough love. Ooh. Yeah. It's tough love. There's unrequited love. There's passionate love. There's motherly love. There's unrequited love. or unrequited? Unrequited. Okay. Just check. Yeah. Although unrequired would be a really interesting concept to go. That's I do not require this. That's a confidence right there. <laughs> unrequired. I your love. I thought it would be tough too, but it was done before April even started. Look at that. See? Moving forward. All right, y'all. Let's go ahead and start having a look at some of the beautiful images from last month's challenge. I'm going to pull up our first one. Remember, if you're in the audience today, this is the visual literacy section of the live stream. Me live stream. I'm fine. Meaning we are going to look at some images that were submitted to the Artist Forge Facebook group. We are going to first just look at them for a few seconds, allow them to make us feel something. And then based on what we feel, we're going to start using our visual literacy skills to ask ourselves, what did the artist do? How did they compose this image? What palette did they choose? What is the expression and body language and composition and all of that stuff? How are those artistic choices contributing to the way that this image is making us feel? And this is really important to get your feedback in the comments. So be prepared to start telling us how these images make you feel. We are going to begin with a beautiful shot by the lovely Jay Coy. And here we go. Nicole, do we have any any context? Is there a title to this? There is not. Friends in the audience, if you know how this one is making you feel, start sharing that in the comments section. I can't decide if this is making me feel pain or passion or both at the same time. Exactly it. I'm trying to look at it from different directions to see how it hits me and feeling the same exact things, Nicole. It's pain. It's That's pain for me. It's pain for me. I, I don't see passion. It's not either for me. Or, or sorrow or, or, Sadness. It's exertion. Hmm. I'm on the, the sadness pain team. I, I'm not getting passion at all for this. It just it feels weak. Team sadness. Team sadness. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Too much wine for team sadness. <laughs> I think something that I mean, I can't tell if it's the color. I have a hard time disassociating red from passion. Um, mm. And with the movement, the movement in there and the pain. And now, remember, passion doesn't have to mean love, right? Passion just means a deep emotional drive to a thing. And so which is why they call passion week, passion week, the passion of the mm. Christ, right? Like passion does mm. not have to mean pain. Oh, so. I, 
Mm, I disagree wholeheartedly. On the definition? Action means to suffer. Right. That does not... Ugh. No, Passion say the thing. means to suffer. Yes. But the suffering in, in the... Are you suffering for love? Are you suffering for, like, or are you from desire? Suffering? Are you suffering... I don't know if, if I would say I'm feeling passion if it's simple suffering. I mean, is there anything simple about suffrage? Like, So I think suffering from, let's say, an unrequited love or a, a, the loss of a loved one is not the same as suffering because I broke my ankle and I can't go snowboarding this summer or this winter, I mean. Both are suffering, but they're very different, right? Like the definition of suffering is the state of undergoing pain, distress, or hardship. Sure. And then we've got some other ones that Olga just shared them right as you were sharing that too. A strong and barely controllable emotion, a man of impetuous passion, the suffering and death of Jesus. So that's mentioning the the kind of the definition that was in my head. Um, so I think depending on probably depend. So I learned this about myself over the last week. I am a figurative language user. And um, when I speak to people who are, who are literal language users, we tend to be saying the same thing and going like this, even though we don't necessarily <laughs> mean something different. I learned this because Kate's husband, Kyle is a engineer. And so we were having these discussions and I'm using language very figuratively and he's using it very literally. And we had to stop and be like, are we actually saying the same thing here? We were at that time, but, uh, but yeah. Okay. Are we allowed to talk? Are yes. we allowed to discuss the, the structure of the image yet? Yeah, I mean, as long so, Becca, Basam, Matt, have do you guys like? Have you guys come like? Do you have a, a solid idea for how this one makes you feel? Yeah, I'm leaning I, I, more. I mean, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say I'm leaning more towards pain, anguish, um, that side of things than necessarily like, oh, this is lovely grass. I love being here. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, if it. The uh, yeah, I'm I'm not just leaning there. That to me, it is it is sadness, anguish, and so on. And the actual red dress is irrelevant to the emotion. The red dress has more to do with what happened. Like where was she? Uh, what was the yeah. occasion? What was the occasion that she is no longer in now? She is in in anguish. She is in pain, right? So I don't see the red as relevant to the specific emotion. I see it more. As a, as a, you know, what happened one frame before and where was she? Mm. That's interesting, Bassam, because I mean, thinking of if there's a woman in an incredible red dress, I, I think it creates this, it implies a certain level of emotion in her already. And maybe there is this kind of contrast between that moment before that you're mentioning. Like, how does this? It, it, it is that, uh, yeah, exactly. Contrast. Yeah. It's like, I can see that. But, yeah. Like she doesn't deserve to be where she is today. Something happened that kind of flipped at 180 degrees, right? Interesting. I just see all yeah. of this emotion flowing out of her. Yeah, totally. The shape there's beautiful. Yeah, it reminds me of a flower. But, but she's yeah, a, I, that's why I was turning my head sideways. Very tulip, you know. But she's also still moving right her hair is in it looks like her hair is still in the, so she's in motion right now she just hit the ground right as opposed to she's sitting there and and dwelling on it or thinking about it or whatever right mm -hmm. a flower there is i mean there's motion there in the the leaves mm -hmm. as well um but yeah it definitely does feel like she just hit the ground not like she's been sitting there for a while particularly in the the shape of the dress and how how that is laid out and I think also yeah. of in the in the way her muscles are contracted in her back. That's what I was looking at. You know, there's a definite tension there, right? Um, the the other thing that I really liked about this was the the use of the bright leaves to keep bringing. I mean, for me, they keep bringing me away and breaking me out of this 
like this feeling of being so wrapped into this passion or this sadness or whatever it is. And I keep coming out of the image, looking at the leaves. I don't know if it's distracting or enhancing, um, but there's the little light leaks as well. Maybe it's my monitor. Maybe that's actually the way it is, but these little light leaks, these streaks of yellow. These are, give it, these are leaves that are blowing. Leaves that are these blowing. Here? Okay. So there is yep, a little bit yeah. of motion there with the dress in the right. hair and all that. Yeah, I think I, I I really like that sense of, you know, her leaning into this whatever wind is blowing things that way. And she's just kind of like whatever pain is coming that way, she's leaning into it. Um, it's just it's a really interesting use of the leaves in a really, really subtle way um, that I enjoy quite a bit in this. It does feel like I like that you guys mentioned it almost feels like the pain is leaking out of her and the, the the spillage of the dress is very much feels like blood in a way i mean it's it's yeah. really flowing from her and i i also like the fact and i'm not sure if i've decided what this means for me yet or not but i also like the fact that her upper body is at a right angle to the motion of the dress so there's a kind of a tension, you know, that's that's happening there between what's happening with the dress and what's happening with her body, aside from like all the tension that's in her her body language and the muscles that we can see contracted there. But I, I think Sharon, I, uh, I appreciate I, the the angling. Like I do like that right angle piece. Her hand is what's what's getting me. Mm. Um, mm. I think Sharon and I almost it. wish I like if we're finished, communicating so. the the tension and the strain and the even the passion and the the enthusiasm for the moment instead of pressing right had that been extended had that had that right arm been extended with the hair you know way up over here and then the dress to follow that would have created a line that that communicated that much more effectively. Um, but just the push up, because you have two directions happening, right? You have her pushing up. So her primary body, her torso is pushing up towards the camera and then everything else is moving to left. Um, there's a, a contrast there that isn't, isn't finding a solution for itself. Yeah. Right. Uh I see it as how Sharon describes it. It's more of a collapse. She's actually fell down and she's just hitting the ground. Her hair is still flowing. So she's not pushing up. She's no, actually- No, because in, the in, hair is already on the ground, even though it's- Oh no, the hair is up in the air. Flowing. I see it as as flying in the air, by the way, because her, her hands are far away from the ground, right? So her no. hair must be up. No, her hands, her hands are, are on the ground. This hand is on the ground. No, no, her arms, sorry. Her arms, her elbows are up. She, as if she's doing push-ups. So the hair cannot be on the ground. That's what I'm trying to say. She's I think wrong. the, I don't think yeah. we have enough. Let me see if I can maybe, um, maybe I can. Can we do like a Matterport pull. thing and just turn it around in 3D? We can just kind of do that. <laughs> right. Yeah, so, Nicole, where are your 3D skills? Come I know, I should have had those. Um, so it's, it's difficult to tell. It looks like there's probably some hair that is blowing in the wind and some hair that is laying on the ground. Cause we certain, I mean, if you look at we've, we're, we're using wind here, we've got these moving leaf shapes. Um, so it's hard to tell how long the model's hair is, but there's definitely some spillage onto and toward the ground and probably some, probably some moving as well. I have the desire to throw myself on the ground and see how I land. <laughs> Doesn't it make you want to be in a gothic romance? That's what it that's what it feels like, right? Run it's off into true. the rain and throw myself onto the ground. Do you have the room there, Becca? I mean, can you move your webcam? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, my hair is touching the ground. <laughs> Becca is. out. It's science. Perfect. The great thing about images like this, though, which very much to Bassam's point is it's our read of it that's the most important part, right? Like, we don't have to come at any image like this and feel like um, like our read of it is the one that everybody must get. Like, everything that's coming together in, in, in us as individuals is very much what it's kind of meant to be for us, which is that great relationship that we have with art. Um, Barry's saying it feels like betrayal. 
It's funny that Barry says that because I was maybe being a bit too cute. I'm looking at the the strap of her dress and it's an X and I say she's been crossed. Ah. I was just thinking that and then he writes betrayal. So yeah, and then it looks like a book cover and I would agree. I think this is exactly the kind of image you might see on a book cover. So Jay's work is always so great. I I absolutely love all of the emotion that is in this shot. No matter how you read it, it's definitely super emotive. All right, time to move on because we don't have all the time in the world, but thank you to Jay for sharing this image. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm sorry that we didn't get to look at it last month, but we get to see it now. And I'm so glad that we got to share it together. We're gonna go ahead and move on to this shot. Let us see how big we can get it. It's relatively contrasty. So if we can't see it well, let me know and I will play with the settings a little bit. Actually, Nicole, if you can add, make it a little brighter because it, it is brighter when it was posted on, it, it's very dark here. Yeah, Maybe that's you can what I was thinking add a, as well. Add a curve or something, yeah. Yeah, that's maybe a little less if I remember what it looked like, yeah. Are we a little closer there? Yeah. Okay. All right, friends in the audience. Yes, Jay, thank you. Thank you for letting us see your gorgeous image. Um, we would love to hear from you what your intention was behind that. If you would share that, that would be amazing. And as you do, we're gonna have a look at this image and start wondering how it makes us feel. Excited and damned. Ooh. Damned, that's, that's a, that's a great. I definitely feel overwhelmed. Like I am in danger here. Danger is the word, right? No, damned is the word. <laughs> I'm not gonna fight. You. Right? Like you're not just in danger. Like this woman is judgment has already been passed, huh? Judgment's been passed, but she's like sacrificing everything just to be seen here. Like, holy cow. Yeah, this character is definitely burning the world down to watch it burn right now. For sure. I wanna know her. <laughs> I can't pick a word. No word for you. Too many words out there to pick from. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see some of the details also. It's a Facebook image, so unfortunately we don't get all of them. But I love how the lightning bolt was caught in camera. It's amazing. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> it looks amazing. <laughs> Sharon saying That's the power. Wine talking. Oh, Barry saying vengeance, a vengeful woman. I think vengeance is is could also be a really great word. I'm gonna go a little off here, and um, it feels like birth. Mm. Huh? Ooh, like I, 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 I can see. Sharon can said see. emergence. Yeah. Yeah. Emergence, birth. Not not just emergence, like birth. I can kind I see of see what you're where seeing. you're coming from there. Yeah. Picking up what you're putting down. I dig it. Moss wine. Mm-hmm. So now, now that we have a few words to define how this image is making us feel, let's break out that visual literacy and try to put in words what the artist has done here that is helping us feel that way. So remember, friends in the audience, we want to hear from you, but we're looking at stuff like composition and color and expression and symbolism and costume and all of that stuff. So see if you can start figuring out what Lauren Shipman, who is the wonderful photographer and artist of this image, see if we can figure out what she did that's making us feel this way. Sharon's saying the flow of the fabric really portrays how hot the environment is. It definitely does kind of feel like the wind coming from the fire is just picking up, or maybe that's her power as well. That's just really kind of but all that movement. You know is what's fantastic. stunting this for me is the brick at the bottom. Mm. Right? Like I want that fabric all the way through and around to to give me that full like 
breath and it's it's almost like stopping right there at, at the whatever that cement stonework rah 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 is um and i want all of it like i want yeah. her coming through so so it, Kat, I, I have to i have to agree with you because uh you know nicole I, I picked that picture because it did it did confuse me because <laughs> of that brick wall i'm trying to figure out even scale wise it doesn't fit there's something about that brick wall that does not fit in the rest of the amazing image and it takes away from it for me is it a well is it a wall it looks like in, in you know from a scale perspective the it's it's just not the scale so it, it really throws me off right? and i'm looking at it from like the sense of just shooting it and it might simply be that that wall was there and like that was the the center place and then there are people like throwing the fabric around her she's just sort of bent into it but at the same time like i want that to be all encompassing so the only thing i'm focusing on is her face and the fire and that bolt behind her hmm. but but if you look at that wall if you look to the left of the image there's a brick behind her which looks like it's around Circle, like could be a, like in a garrison. A well. That's what I was thinking. Or like a top well, of a tower, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I yeah, think right? for me, uh, from a story. Oops, I'm pressing all the wrong damn buttons. Um, from a story perspective, I I actually really like the brick wall, and for me, it's because it looks like a parapet, and it looks like she is burning a fucking castle to the ground, and her dragons are probably in there somewhere, <laughs> about to come tear things down too. Um, so for me, the 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 wall actually adds a bit of storytelling, but I can totally see why um, in your case, like wanting to focus on her and all this beautiful movement, like why you would want to see it without that. But for me, I, I dig it because the embers that are coming up from above, this looks to me like she's, she's just taken over a castle and she's burning shit to the ground. Yeah. You know, when I, when I saw this for the first time, Nicole, and you'll love this is that I thought Smaug, the, you know, the dragon, right? It's immediately what I thought. There's this burning, there's this danger, there's these big wings and scales and fire and all that sort of stuff. It was very um, reminiscent of that. But um, I think that wall, like you said, kind of adds to it that she's in this the top of this tower and is just watching the world burn at her command. And uh, yeah, I love this a lot. I guess the longer I look at it, the more I like it. I don't know. I feel like I don't really have enough context clues in it to get a good feel for what's going on. Um, like the wall, I'm, I also get parapet on a castle from the wall. Definitely. That was how I read that. And I think maybe what's making it a little visually confusing for me is the direction and the flow of the fabric um it just i can't figure out like what if it were natural like wind i feel like it would move differently instead of in multiple mm. directions you know um and that's what also what's kind of giving me that that birth feeling is it almost feels like a disembodied head like emerging from this that, that's the that unbalance. Yeah, yeah, but you that's also the get her body line, about. camera right too. I can't tell if that's the body. Is it? I'm not entirely sure. Let me zoom in a bit and let's see if we can. I can't tell if it is body or more fabric. I can't either because I did think it might be the body. Um, but I mean, I kind of, I could, I'm kind of into the disembodied head thing a little bit. I just wish. I don't know. Actually, something about the fabric is off-putting for me. So, uh, you're the right. Wind. And you know, that's what's bugging me about it. And I just figured it out. The, the, the way the fabric is flowing, it can only be that way if she's actually falling in and and, and mm -hmm. you click the shutter mm -hmm. yep. as she's there. No, no. no I'm sitting here no. going, no. The it, way, no I, I, I'm actually there with Matt. Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> think that's the only way that could happen. Um, no, the, the only... thermals from the fire are lifting everything up but it's so uh, i don't know about that either i'm it's... seeing i'm reading it as her power it's a whoosh, if you've ever had your hair blown up in your face from things coming from behind you yeah like in my head i think that's and there's something wing-like to the shape of them too so 
that's at least for me that's that's how i for me it's it's like coming through so I, I wish her hand were there in the center of the fabric because the way her face is, and I'm like sitting here emulating like in the moment, <laughs> um, but like how forward her face is coming through the fabric. That means her hand is there holding the fabric. It's coming up around her, um, which is what implies the, the body line there, camera right. Um just as somebody who works with fabric on a regular basis. Somebody um, who is an expert fabric throwing champion capturer of beautiful flowing fabrics. <laughs> uh, but like she's almost leaning in, right? So it's not just here's a woman's face, here's a brick thing. And by the way, there's some fabric here. Like she's leaning into it. The story of it is behind her and around her. And then the fabric is there to elicit the drama. Um, yeah. Who is this? This is Lauren Shipman. Nice job, Lauren. Yeah, it is. It is really cool. And I mean, like, as far as color palette and like even even just the, the use of like the repetition of shape from the lightning into the flames and the crown and like the desaturated, sickly, like otherworldly looking face, like yeah. mm -hmm. beautiful, beautiful all around, but just something. I would have done the fabric differently and that may just be my personal taste. And it was interesting for me too, cause we, we can't stay on this one and we do have to move on, but it was interesting for me too, um, as like having a fantasy background, the way that I would read this image is very much baked into the visuals I see when I engage in that work. And so for folks who don't come from a background like that, I can see them having a completely legitimate and completely opposite read than mine. And that's what's so interesting to me about all of this exercise is that you're relying very much upon the visual library that somebody has to pull from in their head. And that's really going to drive how they read something. Totally. You guys, like Basam and Sharon mentioned it was a well, and I didn't see that at all. I, I immediately thought castle. So that's yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, it's cool. Just as an aside, when we do do our retreat, can we please like create some fabric adventure into that process? Yes. Yeah. Let us have fabric adventures. It absolutely must happen. All right. We're going to move on to something very different here. Let me see. Becca chose this shot. I believe this is Xian's. Um, let me go like that. Yes, Sharon. More treats. Also, sometime we are going to run away together into the woods or into some place fabulous and spend like days just hanging out and making cool things together for the Artist Forge. So I'm thinking a big lush green front lawn. Nicole. <laughs> oh, boy. Lawns. I'm going to go off on that one day. All right. Let's have a look at this image. Get a feel for how it makes us feel. I feel like this is also reading a bit darker on my screen than it is on the Book of Faces. Is that, are you guys seeing the same thing? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and bring it up a notch real quick. It's a relatively dark. Can we actually see the, the smoke and everything there from your yep. perspective now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's have a look at this guy. We're going to have to move through the next ones a little quickly because we, we like to linger. Immediately. The pressure uh, and expectation of family. Oh, wow. Is it weird that I just keep thinking, je suis prête? I am ready. Like, that's what keeps going through my head so there's an interesting thing in in asian culture and now mine's coming purely from like the the wealth of of japanese culture that that i've experienced um but the expression on the face is like Okay, I'm here. 
right? But then like all of the garb and the tools and the helmet is like, okay, I'm ready to do this, right? But it's a really intimidating force. Um, this is really pretty fantastic. I love I love the androgyny of it. I don't know if this is a girl or a guy. And based on where I sit with that changes the emotion that I feel. Oh, that's an and, interesting piece of self-reflection, mm. huh? Yeah. So um, I just, I can't tell by the features on the face. I can't tell by body shape. Um, and there's a lot that, I don't want to say confuses me, but is conflicted in me as to how I interpret it because I don't know who's in what the is suit. the what is the conflict, Matt? So there's, I mean, I, I guess conflict's a weird word, but I mean, if there's a if there's a young man in this outfit, I'm thinking, you know, he's prepping for war. He's prepping for that um, uh, that 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 immediate conflict that's about to happen there's a, a preparation for that fight if i see it as a young woman it is being cast into a role she doesn't want to be in or has to feel like she has to put on a costume or a mask to fit in uh, there's different things here that um based on how i look at it and then thinking about cultural sides of it just make me feel different and i like being like having that question and going back and forth i like not sure. knowing yeah but that's that no, is like the, the thing i like yeah. the challenge you know looking at this i was like okay so we're in like a, a chinese affect but looking at it from a space of a, a, a japanese perspective um it's still a very like the smoke bringing in the, the challenge and almost the, the body positioning be it's not defensive. It's almost like, no, please don't pick me. Like res almost resignation or retreat. Yeah. yeah. There's a very slack body posture in it. Yeah. It's interesting to, to think about how your read on something is different depending on what the perceived gender of the person is and the way that we relate to that culturally. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a really interesting thing to think about, particularly when you're looking at images from different cultures where you know, there are different expectations and different understandings of how gender is related to circumstance and things like that. And um, I think it's really interesting you know, to see so Barry is saying resignation. I think that's a great word in that circumstance, Sharon agreeing there. Um, and for me, I mean, this is, this is, looks to be competition armor. And so there's very much a feeling of like, I think the hands folded the way that they are. I, I definitely have that sense of resignation, but it doesn't feel hesitant to me i want it to go just, make stuff. yeah <laughs> it just feels um ready not yeah. eager but ready uh, yeah i i use the word primed it, it, you know the fact that the person is leaning back i don't see it as resignation as i see it as a defensive position as opposed to an offensive position right so it's in a way bring it on i'm ready i'm primed i'm up i see to it Right? I see but doubt, I'm on the but I'm on the defensive. Like I'm the yeah. defense here, not the offense. I yeah, it's definitely I not an offensive see, position. I, I don't I, see I, defense I, or offense. I'm seeing someone standing there wearing all of the things with their hands at their sides, holding a tool. Like, okay, what now? Mm. That's interesting because I see somebody in the lists. This looks to me like a person waiting for their turn. Mm. Mm. I know Siri had her hand up, and so Siri has got something to add to this conversation. What do you see, Siri? I actually could see it just now. You could? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think it means that there's smoke in there? It means it's like evil. Oh, oh. like evil. Because like smoke and fire and stuff? I actually don't know. <laughs> 
Oh, the danger. The danger. The danger. This actually reminds me of um, in basic training, you would get exercised so hard that while you're standing there with all of these other people, the heat and steam from your body is rising up into the air. It literally looks like everybody's burning away. Um, this reminds me of that. Like it's somebody who just making, like 10 times. <laughs> Yeah, you just, woof, all of it. It's all the steam. It's all the rice. That's all that's happening. It's just all of the that's rice it. is being steamed right now. That's what's happening. Yeah. We're going to put the koji on it soon. It'll be fine. Cat's prepared. Okay, I wish we could stay here longer. I know we're not going to have time to get through everything. This is a, a wonderful shot. And I know, I believe that Sean had mentioned some of the circumstances around this, um, hopefully we'll be able to get a little bit more information so we have some context. But um, I love how much this one made us think and also um, reflect a little bit on why we would come to certain conclusions, especially looking at things culturally and from a gender perspective. I think that's super duper interesting. So we have seen these ones and we have seen this lovely shot. Oh, okay. I thought the symbolism was so interesting in this one, this gorgeous image by Sicily of Sicily. So I felt like we needed to at least look at this one and get a good read on it. So if you're in the comments today, let us know how this image makes you feel. Siri already has feelings. Can you wait just a minute, Siri, and then I'll call on you. Actually, can we start with Siri? Yeah. Siri, you want to tell us what you think first? Uh, there's like little chains on her. There is little chains on her. You were right. I'll go first. Go. Yeah. This gives me ambition. Mm. <laughs> I, I see that. It was in the, same, the same gambit there for sure like the intensity in her eyes is like get to fucking work y'all uh yeah the fact I see that Kong. go, go ahead. ahead nicole no go ahead i was just gonna say um the use of red here in this is really super powerful for me because she's she's controlled it so carefully there's very much a sense of having eaten the forbidden fruit and having gained the power that comes along with it, right? So like she's got this pomegranate broken in her hands. There's red and it's really pronounced on the inside of her lips. So there's this, this feeling that she has tasted the seeds of power, right? And there's red around her eyes. So it really, it very much feels to me like all of the men whoever held her down had better watch out because she has tasted of the fruit of power and now she is about to go lay with Get it, Cicela. Yes, girl. Yeah. The word that, that popped to mind was conquest. Yeah. Um, and just like, I, I own it all right now. And this entire series, if you've seen it, is phenomenal. Um, but yeah, this image in particular is incredibly powerful and i think you nailed it nicole with the subtle use of red rather than it being so overt um actually makes it much more attractive um and really it. for me kate woodman says hush now yeah um i love the intensity in her eyes the only thing i want is instead of the hands being here I want them here. I want to see more of that fruit and I want it crushed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? It could definitely be really interesting to see some of the some of the juices coming out of her mouth, even mm -hmm. like that. Dang it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my computer's trying to tell me that conversations are happening. Um, but yeah, I, it, oh, this, and obviously like the symbolism, the chain mail there being knightly, right? Like that's the thing you wear if you're a warrior and the expression on her face, I mean, she's just staring down the camera, the open mouth. Um, also, there's something really sensual about this image to me. 
me as well, which I think there's also additional power in that. Um, Sharon mm -hmm. asking who this is. This is Cicela Johansson. And she's saying the word that comes to me right away is offering. That's really interesting. Maybe because of the, the body language of the hands. That is interesting because I definitely see it as taking as mm. opposed to giving. Especially because the, the fruit's broken in half, right? Like this was yep. not sliced or neatly done. This was pulled apart. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, no, I, I think that's just it. Like the way how, how settled her hands are is because it was cut and now she's holding and presenting instead of ripping it the hell apart. Like, and yeah, that's, oh, that's what's missing for me. That's interesting because when I, I think when I look at it and I see the kind of jagged edges and everything, I definitely, I feel, I feel like it's a, a, I mean, but her hands are obviously much more gentle. So it's interesting. There's some kind of some tension there between how to read that one. What, what do you want? Say your piece, child. Um, it looks like she's actually wearing lipstick and I think she's opening a flute. <laughs> I think you're right. I think it's you're true. correct there. But Sam, what are your thoughts on this? I, I'm all over the place. I, I, you know, fruit in general signifies abundance. And I'm trying to see, is there any way abundance can fit into this picture? Because it's more what you're describing. There's an aspect of sanctity and holy holiness. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, because uh, Cicela has such a, like, the, her, her features are so very much renaissance like you just go straight there um it, but yeah. i think your instincts are correct Basam. so yeah, Basam, is that, just, is that so, a... just so we know the the pomegranate is a symbol of life and fertility also of power blood and death oh so it's the oh geez okay yeah and, and then i look at that and it looks is it a veil or is it a body armor or not a body or a head armor like is it a veil chain or mail. Armor? it's chain mail chain mail yeah no no i'm, I'm not asking what it is i'm just saying Oh yeah, it goes over the head. Oh I yeah, it's a I, cowl. I see it as a a way in a veil. Mm, so like warrior priestess kind of. Yeah, thing. yeah. A godliness. It uh, makes me want to go do some self portraits. I will say that. <laughs> <laughs> My son, I have been in a full a full top of chainmail. It's not easy to get that off. I'm just gonna say. Not with my hair, no. <laughs> no, they'll be braided and tucked and carefully taken care of there. Yes, so we can't stay here either. This is, geez, conversations. Um, beautiful image by Cicela, absolutely striking. So much symbolism here, super duper powerful. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh. This is the last one we're gonna look at um, because I. this is so interestingly done and done so very differently from many other of the images. And so I wanted to give us a chance to have a look at this one before we close. I'm also going to adjust mm. this a bit and bring back some detail here. How are we seeing uh, that? Is it a little over too far? Stars? A little too far, how is that? That's good. Okay. Something to say. What do you have to say, Siri? He's like have a belt right here. I don't think it's a belt. What is it? I can't quite see. I think he loved the death. Are we tones. looking here? Oh, yes. This is, de this is a this is a Tones album. Yeah. Yeah, it, it looks like a belt. You're right, Siri, but it's actually a, either a magazine or an album. It is an album cover. Things before her time. Death Tones. Or were they? No. <laughs> So Barry's in initial feelings, uh, mysterious bald dude, a trickster, interesting. Olga saying distortion of perspective here, feels confrontational. Oh, I love all of those. I, I do love, because I love that album and I love the, the, con the context with the light bulb behind him. Uh, just the very frank, like it's making me think, but also there's like a very dark energy, which is is pretty obvious with the, the Deftones. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's an interesting family of, of imagery here. Yeah. Um, Olga's saying very 90s, 90s aesthetic. aesthetic. Come on, Olga. <laughs> 
It is. It totally is. I have to know. Yeah, about how many how many videos on MTV in the nineties had the like crazy wide angle fisheye look? Like it feels uh, I <laughs> nah, 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 nah. nice applicate nice application of Rembrandt lighting. Yeah. Yeah. And I love that there is not a whole lot of fill light going on. So we really get the mystery. So like this, you know what this makes me feel like? He has just got some shit from these albums and he's looking at you like, are you in the know? Because I'm in the know. I know some shit. Fuck yeah. Are you maybe in? Maybe you don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe I want to take need it a little conversation. boys farther and like come straight in with some hands. Like. <laughs> Go full on. No. Yeah. I mean, I think with the light in the background, like you were mentioning, Kat, it's almost like um, that's it always symbolizes knowledge to me. Right. Like, you, you yeah. know, something with that light. And then it's cool, too, because we see his shadow <laughs> on the wall. We have this really broken kind of angles happening from the shadows here. The only blue that's in the image is the logo from the Deftones. And then using that wide angle lens really gives it a feeling of immediacy. So he is coming at the person who is seeing this image, which um, I think is is really fantastic. Plus all of the mystery that is going on with the um, with the the shadows on his face. And we've got fantastic Charoscuro here. So we have light to dark to light to dark to light to dark. So we're have these really great patterns also happening. So I I just find this to be a super, super fantastic image to look at. Yeah, Michael's definitely kind of one to watch, right? He's he's come out of the gate with a lot of his work and he's doing phenomenal things. Um, you know, and I think I saw this in the group where he deconstructed not only the reasoning behind it, but how he did it. So I'm a little yeah. bit biased knowing how he explained everything. Um, but I'm a sucker for wide angle. Give me 12 millimeters or less, like just widen this weird thing. <laughs> fish out. it out. Just fish, just fish it out. And I'm, yeah, I'm a huge sucker for that. And I love the use of this where he distorts just enough but it's not so that his head and face are so completely distorted that you're like, oh, you didn't know what you were doing. Um, he uses the lens really, really well to give you that feeling of leaning in. Like you said, a little bit of secrecy, a little bit of um, you don't know what I know, right? And uh, I'm checking you out to see if you're cool enough to listen to this Deftones record, right? <laughs> and so I love not only that but he mimics the album cover itself in terms of the lighting so if you go down and you're looking at that album cover he's mimicking yeah. the light that's on the cover and, and it's wide just, angle as well right it's and, wide yeah, angle. It's, it's gorgeous use of it really really and gorgeous. Really if you great. look straight through it's even the angle yep. too so it's yep. just like super smart right and, and also there's an aspect of possessiveness in it if you i can mm. like i can't really tell if that's his arm or if that's part of the album cover but it's almost like he's got his arms crossed and saying he does yeah yeah he does so so there's a bit of possessiveness there so like don't touch yeah. this is mine you're not gonna get access and to now can we go through the context of the album and the songs and the poetry that is released within those songs so that we could like that's really where i want to head to with this image it's like everything that's released in the songs from the set like it's one of my favorite albums of all time so <laughs> like having that layer is just like ah oh, shut up get out of here michael so i love you smart. michael You're <laughs> yeah he's great great yeah super super smart and i love the fact that this is an example of the fact that um i'm sorry basam i did not mean to cut you off um no, keep going keep going I love the fact that this is an example of one of those times where a powerful image does not have to be pretty, right? It's well done and it's very smart and it's it's still visually interesting, but it, it's you're not like, uh, we don't need that. We just need yeah. it to be powerful and confrontational. And I love that about this shot. I, I was just gonna ask a question. Does does the, the light above his head bother you or do you think it helps the image? Like, I don't know if it's intentional or not. And I can't decide whether it's distracting or whether it's actually part of the. Given you know, the I album, the same... I would say I would say it adds. I would say the same thing, Basam. I think if he cropped that little bright part out, but you still saw the stem, 
that Ooh. it would um that it would yeah like right there right you're still seeing that there's a light there but you're not distracted by that bright spot um that to me would make it damn near perfect i gotta go I, guys i gotta go i gotta go listen to death tones <laughs> <laughs> It's a good thing we're just about done then so we can release you to go listen to Deftones. Um, yeah. Any thoughts on this one, Becca? Many. I think what really strikes me about this in particular is that it's just like so casually cool. Like, I feel like this is the kind of picture that you like put as your profile picture and it becomes your profile picture for 15 years, you know, like <laughs> if there was totally. still MySpace, this would be your picture. Right, even oh, yeah, for sure. Instagram or whatever. Like it's not trying too hard. It's not like you said, overtly pretty. It's just cool. It's full of yeah. personality and intelligence. Yeah. I, that's yeah, what totally. I really like about it. Yeah. Hang on. I, I put on around the floor. Hang on. I'll be right back. And and the thing is, if you if you know Michael, who's an incredible human being, um, he's just the nicest, quietest, calmest person. And to see this side of him, there's such a um, uh, just a, a, a conflict, really, between like who the person is, and then there's this other side. And I love that. I love that about knowing the artist and knowing you know the image itself. So um, yeah. Okay, are you guys big... ready for this? Oh, ready to go. DJ We're going to bring some sounds. We're going to bring some sound to this image. Here we go. And YouTube bans us for copyright infringement. Right. I don't know if we're going to get the full effect of it over the speakers because it wants to echo back on itself. But, um, Kat, tell people what this album is so they can go snag it up, so they can go check it out. Ah, it's just the best. What's the name of this album? Around the Fur. Around the Fur. All right, folks. Around the fur. Now you have to go listen to it and see how it fits this image. Okay. Unfortunately, we have no more time tonight. Final honorable mention. I wish we could have had time, but this absolutely stinking stunning portrait where red is used to frame this incredibly stunning goddess of a human. So beautiful and good. We just Cicilla didn't have too? time. Hmm? Cicilla is that as well. Cicilla as well? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely stunning. So gorgeous. Yay, Cicilla's here. I Where hope you were here, Cicilla. We got to look at your other image. It was so wonderful. And you're going to have to tell us what you think about it. So you, your job now is to go back and watch and tell us if we got anywhere near <laughs> where you wanted to go. But we have reached the end of the live for today. Any final thoughts, y'all, on the uh, topics of conversation or the beautiful images that we saw today? I'm excited for, for this month's love. Like, what a great lead-in. Holy yeah. crap. And we've already seen, like, from the images that have been shared already, I love that so people have been approaching it from so many different perspectives, even from personal love to, like, the things that I love and the little pieces of the things yeah. that I love so far. It's been super great to see. So yeah. I hope yeah. friends are out there making amazing things. We need to hype it up. We need more pictures. It's the middle of the month already, guys. I know. And speaking of red and love, Apothic <laughs> wine um, has treated me well this evening. So thank you, Apothic, for sponsoring the Artist Forge you just on wine. Did the motion. Why'd you do that? <laughs> he really, really loves it, Nicole. Don't judge. He really loves it. <laughs> All right, friends. I'll, I'll say go later. out make <laughs> images with love as the theme however you see it however you interpret it and in whatever medium if you're going to throw a pot and that is love as the theme if you're going to go sculpt something photograph it and show it to us if you're going to make a photograph or a painting bring it we want to see your beautiful works of art that is the theme this month and excitingly we are going to go through People who are in the Facebook group will react to the images they feel the most drawn to and the images that have the most reactions, likes or loves are going to get chosen. The five images are going to get chosen for the next live, which is on the fourth 
Thursday of the month. We will take those, we'll visual literacy the hell out of them like we just did with the images that we just saw. And the image that we feel is the most impactful will then become the head image on the group, the banner image of the group. You will get an interview with, wait, the lovely Matt Stegliano is going to interview you for the Artist Forge podcast. You will get a interview and blog post up on theartistforge.com. We're just going to celebrate the hell out of you and tell everybody where they can find your work. So go make something amazing. Share it in the pinned post and Facebook. Make sure you use the hashtag TAF April Challenge. And we will like it and love it and share it and do all the things. So go make cool stuff. All right. We will be together, of course, tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's 6 a.m. for the West Coast and 9 a.m. for the East Coast afternoon for our friends overseas. Come join us then where we will continue these interesting topics of conversation. And always go check out theartistforge.com where podcasts and blog posts are going up regularly with fantastic information that will help you learn to think like an artist. Until tomorrow morning, have a great one. Go make something amazing. We'll see everybody. Then, bye, friends. Bye, guys.